Hey there, y'all. This is Jackie, your prissy hippie. Don't be alarmed when I show you this. Uh, but I um, told y'all when I got home, I'd show you um, what purple conditioner that I put on my hair and leave it to take the brassiness out. And if you've got like yellow or orange tones, like if you color your hair or if you're gray headed and you're hard water, we have very hard water here down in South Georgia. So it kind of gives my hair a brassy tone. So I use a purple conditioner. And uh, actually this one is my absolute favorite. I get this at the Dollar Tree for $1.25. When I find them, I buy 10 or 12 at a time and I put them in my bathroom cabinet, but I'm gonna show you. I put it on dry hair. Here I is. You see that? Uh, oh, you can tell it's purple. I, I got it in my my ear. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, a lavender color. But I put it on dry hair and I let it sit here uh, on it for 30 minutes or an hour and then I'll get in the shower and uh, I'll rinse it out real good. But this is it if you want to take a screenshot. The light's kind of, it's called Pro Silk Salon Purple Conditioner Knocks Out Brassy Tones and Blonde and Gray Hair. Infused with Coconut Oil and Shea Butter from the Dollar Tree. I haven't looked on Amazon to see how much it's supposed to be, but it's the $1.25 at the Dollar Tree. I love it. Been using it now for about a year, year and a half since the first time, and I just bought one. I thought, well, I'll try this and see how it works. Loved it, and I've used it ever since. And I only do this about once a month, uh, but it's good for my hair, and it makes it just as soft and silky uh, as it can be. But I love, I love this. But, yeah, I put it everywhere, and I leave it on um, for 30 minutes. So that was the first thing I wanted to show you. So I'll go put that up in just a minute. This is my um, coloring my hair when I used to, before I went gray in 2020, before I went all natural. Th this is my robe that I uh, clean the bathroom with and bleach. I don't care what happens to this. Do you know what I mean? So I saved this robe for just this time. A in case it gets on it, I just throw it in the washer with the colored clothes. Everything's fine. But I saw something on Instagram and I wanted to attempt to make it. Now I've never made it before. I don't know how it's going to turn out. But in this little uh, stainless steel skillet, uh, let me turn that, that's bubbling. And I got it down on number two, which is right above low. So let me turn it on low. This is already hot. So she said to take a can of sweetened condensed milk. You know how I am. I'm thrifty. I'm cheap. I bought the Food Line brand, and it's 14 ounces. And she said take about half um, a, a can of this, or about seven ounces of peanut butter. And to not mess up another dish, I'm just going to guess at it. She said about. So I'm going to put my peanut butter in here, and I'm going to put it in there. This is already up hot. So it's just two ingredients. It's just sweetened condensed milk, a whole can of it, and then half a can of peanut butter of your choice. And I've just got the store brand, of course, of a smooth peanut butter. And I am making this uh, for Tony and Ashley. Ooh, maybe I should turn that up. That I mean, start it up. That, that looks like it's a little goopy gloppy. So, um... Well, I think it's going to take the rest of this little jar right here uh, to get half of a can. And you don't want to skip on it. Like, I would do a little more than less than because what this is supposed to be is an easy peasy um, uh, peanut butter fudge. Two ingredients, sweetened condensed milk and peanut butter. You put it in the refrigerator for three or four hours till it sets up good, and then you can top it in chocolate if you want to. But you gotta let it set up first so that, she said she messed up one time and uh, put the chocolate on and the chocolate sunk to the bottom, which I'm sure it was still just as delicious, but that's not what she was wanting. And you're supposed to put it in a nine by nine or an eight by eight, um, but I think I left mine up at the church and, and I need, or. We could have broke it. I don't know. I can't find it. So, um, 
that is actually, I don't know if you can tell, that's a little more than um, half of a can, but we're gonna roll with it. I, I done emptied that out. I'll let the dogs lick it here in a minute. And, well, I'm gonna let them lick that too. This is enough. So let's pour this in there. And you just get it mixed up real good. And uh, you don't have to bring it to a bowl or nothing. That's what I liked about it. Because, you know, it's kind of hard, to I, I think, to make uh, homemade fudge. You got to get it to the softball stage or use a candy thermometer and all that kind of stuff. Unless you make the fudge that's on the marshmallow fluff um, doohickey, which I do make that sometimes for the girls. Um, so anyway, I think that's about good, actually. So, I'll stick that down in that. And, huh, licking my fingers, getting calories, you know. So let's get this mixed in. And then I melted just a tablespoon of butter in the microwave because my butter was just as hard as a rock. And I'm just gonna put it, since I can't find it, I'm just gonna put it right here in this pie plate, this little Pyrex, and um, butter this up really well. I'm sure you could use Pam, but this isn't for me. This is for Tony and Ashley if she wants some. Tony, uh, his favorite candy is Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, so you know that's what this is gonna taste like. And it didn't take that whole tablespoon. I think this is gonna be plenty. Good enough. So I'll put that down in there. Wrap this butter up. I'll be right back. I'm gonna put it back in the fridge. Okay. Alrighty then. So let's get this that big old glop. It's not wanting to come unglopped. If this works, this is gonna be that, you know, we got the holidays coming up. Um, Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I make a lot of candy and different stuff for the grand girls. And I like to have like, you know, peppermint bark uh, on the counter when guests come over. I put it in a, a glass um, cake plate with a glass dome, you know, so different ones can see it and it looks pretty and they can just lift up the thing but I, I make a lot of different kinds of Christmas bark. Sometimes I'll put pretzels and um, you know M&M's, nuts. Sometimes I leave it plain because Kirksey don't like it unless it's plain. So I think I got to, ooh that smells good. Um, I think it's all mixed up good. And this looks exactly like hers did. Let me show it to you. It's just a peanut butter mush. That's sweetened condensed milk, not evaporated milk, and peanut butter. Use a whole can of this, then fill up the can about halfway, a little more instead of a little less, because you, you want it to taste like peanut butter, you know. So, <clears throat> I'm going to take this, turn this eye off, and I'm going to flop it down in here. I was gonna answer a couple of questions uh, that I got on one of my videos. Uh, I'm a Southern lady and I talk kind of Southern or country, some people refer to it as, and yes, I am, uh, very much so. Um, they couldn't understand what I was saying when I would say uh, my granddaughter's name. So, um, I have three granddaughters. The oldest one's named Brentley. It's B-R-E-N-T-L-E-E. -E -E. She's named after both grandpas, Brent and Tony's middle name is Lee. So, Brentley, one word. And uh, the second one, she's 14. The second one is Kirksey, K-I-R-K-S-E-Y. And that is a family name. My Grandma, my mother's mother, uh, Nora, her last name was Kirksey before she married my grandpa. 
so um, my daughter loved it and thought it was a pretty name so and it was different so she uh, named uh, the second one Kirksey K-I-R-K-S-E-Y Kirksey K-I-R-K-S-E-Y she said it sounded like I was saying curtsy like you know curtsy <laughs> but uh, and then the little one that just turned uh, eight uh, Kirksey's birthday was yesterday she turned 12 and the little one is Libby Shea uh, and uh, she said that she thought I was saying lip shade um, I'm telling you I know I'm, I'm country um, she, uh, her name is Liberty L-I-B-E-R-T-Y but she doesn't go uh, by Liberty uh, she goes by Libby Shea her um, middle name is Shea S-H-A-E so that's so it's Brentley Kirksey and Libby Shea and of course I say it quickly so I'm sure it did sound like lip Shea Libby, Libby Shea and she's my little doll baby um, we were actually living here uh, when uh, Liberty was born Ashley went back to work as a school teacher at uh, when uh, Libby Shea was three weeks old so uh, I have kept Tony and I have kept uh, Libby um, since she was three weeks old and um, we we are very, very we're close to all of them we love our grand girls uh, two pieces you know how it is um but we um are especially close to libby i think because it was like our baby uh Kirksey was already two when we moved here so that means brentley was four there's two years between them and then ashley uh was uh, expecting again with a little boy she made it to 17 weeks and we don't know what happened but she lost that baby and it was a little boy and his name was Bo uh, so we've got a little grandson in heaven um, and like I said his name is Bo so um, he would be 10 years old right now I think about him all the time but um, that really really devastated uh, Ashley when she lost him uh, I mean to be 17 weeks, but they think that somewhere around 15 weeks is when he stopped growing and when his heart quit beating. So unfortunately, she went to the doctor by herself that day and was alone when she found out the baby didn't have a heartbeat. And she had to go in the hospital and, you know, uh, deliver it, have the DNC and all that. It was, it was horrendous and she went through a really hard time with that. But anyway, you can see what I'm doing. I just um, took that mixture and smoothed it out really well, so it's gonna be a really thin fudge, but this is, you know, sweet condensed milk. It's, it's gonna be really, really um, rich. So I don't mind that the, the pieces are gonna be thin. So uh, that's Ernie, he's wanting to go outside with his daddy. Tony's outside fixing to clean up the car. So now this will go into the refrigerator until it sets up well. And she said three or four hours. So I'm going to put this in the fridge and then I'll show you what we're going to do when we get back. Hang on a second and I'll do this, but I want to talk to you about something else. This has nothing to do about what I was going to talk to you about, but I, I, I told you all the different prices of things in my last grocery haul and I thought that I would uh, tell you about this. Tony went and picked this up. Uh, it was right across the aisle there from where I was getting the tuna fish. He said, oh, let's get us a made one in case we want to eat a hamburger steak. So he didn't tell this, and I didn't pay any attention, but he didn't tell me this until I was unpacking everything. Um, this bottle, it's a 15-ounce bottle, uh, was over $8 at the food line. Well, he told me that I like to have a stroke. I said, Tony, I don't even sound right. And he said, that's what the tag said. And he said, I watch. That's what it rang up as. So I looked uh, on Walmart's website, and I looked at it on Amazon, and it's a little over $6 at Walmart. So it's $2 higher at the food line. But uh, groceries have just gotten high. Excuse me a minute. Humana, my insurance company, is calling, so I'll be right back. 
Hey there. Okay, I'm back. I got my mess cleaned up. I wanted to go ahead and wash that pan before that peanut butter uh, sweet and condensed mixture, you know, dried and it would become like glue and have to be soaked and scrubbed and all that kind of stuff. So I went ahead and cleaned my mess up. I like to clean as I go. I don't know if y'all are like that. But um, another uh, question that I got and I thought I'd address is... Um, Someone had asked uh, what my highest weight was and when that was. So I had gone uh, to the doctor. I was insulin dependent. Uh, I took insulin before each meal. I took one nightly. I mean, I, I was really sick. And um, because I had let myself get so very big. For years and years, um, I was on um, prednisone. I took, I went to a rheumatologist and I took a lot of uh, steroids uh, because I had chronic pericarditis. And that is an infection and inflammation of the lining of the heart. I would also get pleurisy a lot. That's Suki, she's at the door. She knows I'm in here. She, Hang on a second. Okay, I shoot her away, but she'll probably start crying here. She is the biggest baby, y'all. Now that it's dark outside, I'm jumping around. I can't. I've got ADHD, if you can't tell. Um, when she, I take her out in the mornings, or if Ashley takes her out and it's dark outside, she'll cry and she'll practically tinkle on your foot and do a shoey on your foot because she won't get away from you. Uh, she's scared to death of the dark. She can't stand to be out there early in the morning. So anyway, um, she, she cries over everything. She's just that she's a little over one year old and she's the biggest whiny baby I've ever seen. She's like having a baby. But anyway, hopefully I gave her some toys and filled up her, her water bowl with ice and she likes to dig around there and get the ice out. So maybe that'll occupy her for a minute. But anyway, as I was saying, I would have chronic pericarditis, pleurisy, um, I'd have pneumonia all the time, and um, what is the other thing uh, that I used to have? Pleurisy, pericarditis, pneumonia, and hang on a second, costochondritis. I, I could think of. I think from all the coughing and all that, I would pull those little. It's you know the little ligaments and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I I stayed sick a lot. And I would have to go on steroids. And I don't know if you've ever partaken and had to be on uh, prednisone. And I mean, I was on 100 milligrams a day. And uh, it makes you very, very hungry. And I ate way too much. And uh, of course, over ate terribly. Um, but uh, prednisone to me, it's a good drug, but it, it's a wicked drug and there's a lot of side effects. So I blew up, I had the moon face and uh, I, I was, I, I just put on, packed on a lot of weight with, with a quickness, which I had probably been uh, 220, 225, something like that when I started getting sick and it got put on the medicines and I blown up like that. But honestly, I didn't realize I had gotten that big. So the day, that day that I went to the doctor, I was up to 396.4. So I was just under 400 pounds. And I just knew, I, it was like I had a, a, a revelation or an epiphany. I, I knew that I was just heading for the grave. So, um, I went and to Walmart and bought a whole bunch of, I looked up a bunch of stuff about the keto diet, which basically is the Atkins diet from the seventies, kind of the same thing. But I went keto th that very night. Uh, I ate a chicken breast that night and some sauteed spinach. And from then on, um, and, and I actually got so strict about it, I pretty much was carnivore. Uh, I just ate meat and eggs uh, all the time, which I know now that you can eat all the animal products with, you know, butter and hard cheeses and stuff like that, but I, I didn't. Um, I, I was just primarily just eating meat. Uh, but if you if you want to lose some weight uh, with a quickness, uh, go carnivore. Just eat meat, and that weight will fall off you. Um, but my philosophy now uh, is I um, figured up what my TDEE -E is, my to total daily energy expenditure, and figured out what my 
uh, maintenance calories are, and then I want to be in a 500 calorie um, deficit every day. So uh, I eat in a calorie deficit and I try to eat lower carb. I'm not keto, but I eat lower carb and I make uh, protein um, my primary source of nutrition. And I do eat a lot of greens. I eat a lot of cabbage, Brussels sprouts, uh, spinach, turnip greens, collard greens. I love all the greens. Um, but uh, that that's my diet now. But I do eat fruit. A lot of people, uh, because I think I, I'm on a whole food diet. Um, I, I, I think fruits are good for you. Th this is my philosophy of life. I think God has provided everything that we need on this planet. I think he gave it to us. Um, so I, he provided fruit for, for us in my refrigerator right now. I have peaches. I have uh, gala apples. And I have navel oranges. And the oranges are primarily for, for Libby Shay. She loves oranges. She eats an orange every day. Uh, and I, I might eat some of one um, every now and then. Oranges aren't my favorite. They're okay. But I do love apples. Um, and I try to buy the little bitty ones because those big old apples, I can't eat all that. And so the, the dog eats the other one and they're expensive. So I like to buy the little tiny apples, bag of apples. I wash them good and I put them down in the bottom drawer because I like a cold apple. I prefer that. But I usually keep berries in the freezer, strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, and I'll put them in my yogurt if I want some because I think they're they're good for you. They got a lot of vitamins and minerals, and now I don't eat a lot of them, but I try to eat at least a serving of some kind of fruit every day. I eat a lot of vegetables and I eat a lot of lean meat. Um, uh, I do not care for turkey bacon. Ashley eats turkey bacon. I do eat turkey pepperonis, but I I don't like turkey bacon. I've tried every brand there is. The one at Sam's and Costco, their brand, whatever it is, is okay. Um, but And I don't mind the turkey sausages. And like I said, the turkey pepperoni, like turkey kielbasa by Healthy Choice. I like that. Uh, but there's just something about that turkey bacon I don't like. I eat Wright's bacon. I'd rather have less of something and it be delicious and good uh, than a whole lot of something yucky. You know, I'll take one piece of Wright's bacon uh, rather than six pieces of turkey bacon. You know what I mean? I just don't like it. it I, I don't care for it. So, uh, and I, if I'm going to eat bacon, I want it to be Wright's bacon and I like it rendered out real well. And like I said, I usually eat uh, an egg and a piece of bacon. So uh, it fits in my calorie uh, deficit. That's, you know, part, and, and I, I do eat bacon quite often, probably two or three times a week. Uh, I usually only eat red meat uh, one or two times uh, a week. I eat a lot of chicken, a lot of turkey breast, um, uh, and we eat a lot of fish. I like the white fish that's not so fishy. Uh, I, I saute me some uh, shrimp that I devein and clean out the poop chute myself. I have to clean all that out. I don't rely on somebody else to do it. And I don't order it when we go to a restaurant because I don't know how somebody else fixes it. They might not be as particular as I am. Clean it out yourself one time and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's yucky. So I do that myself. But Getting back to the subject of me believing that God has provided everything that we need on this planet. There is a reason why my channel is called Prissy Hippie. Uh, I am Prissy. That was my nickname that my daddy gave me when I was a little girl. He called me Prissy all the time. That was just kind of my nickname. And uh, I am um, pretty much a, a hippie. I love, love, love music, music of all kinds. I used to go to concerts all the time. Where we live now, there's not, we'd have to go to Atlanta or go down to Jacksonville, you know. Uh, I'm, we lived right outside of Nashville for a while. I lived in Nashville, Tennessee, and there was music and festivals and concerts going on all the time, and that's just something that I've done since I was a teenager. Like I said, I snuck off and went to concerts, and when me and Tony started dating, we'd go to, um, 
it wasn't Riverfront Park. Well, I can't remember what the name of it was, but we went for the one for the Sun Festival with, you know, Willie Nelson and all them every year. We just went to concerts and did music and stuff all the time. So um, we were uh, exposed to, uh, at a very young age, a uh, plant. It's a special herb that God has provided for us on this earth, and I quite enjoyed it. Um, it's legal now in several states. In several states, they don't have it recreationally legal, but it's uh, medically legal. I am a hospice nurse, and I recommend it all the time to my patients, especially uh, for pain, but especially the patients that have trouble eating, that have lost their appetite as an appetite stimulant and helps them a lot. So I don't know if I can say the name on YouTube. Uh, you get in trouble for different things. Um, so I know you know what I'm talking about. Um, Cat Williams says it's a plant and if you happen to set it on fire, there are some effects. You understand what I'm saying? But I quite enjoyed that. But one of the main effects of this certain herb plant is that it is a, an appetite stimulant. And uh, uh, one of my favorite things to do was to uh, become medicated and get in the kitchen and throw down. I would cook and cook and eat and eat. I have never tried a kind that doesn't um, make me have a, an appetite. Uh, now, from what I understand, I've never been lucky enough to go uh, to a state that had a dispensary. I've never been inside a dispensary, but apparently you can talk to the um, persons, the, the tenders that, that live there, uh, I mean, that work there, and pro they probably think they live there, but work there, and you can tell them what your goal is and what your, the effects that you're wanting, whatever. Apparently, there's like eight to ten I don't know exactly how many strains that they have developed and there are certain strains now that aren't appetite suppressants but where I live we don't have dispensaries it is not legal to go in those places and to be able to pick out what you want uh, so um, I had to give that up when I got real serious about losing weight uh, I know that that is something that helped pack on the pounds for me. So when I got serious about losing weight, that it was the first thing that I gave up. Um, and uh, even now, you, uh, there are vape shops or smoke shops. I think they even at the convenience stores. I made a video one time where I had gotten a vape pen from a gas station in Mississippi, I think it was, or... Uh, it could have been Alabama. I can't remember. We was on a road trip. Uh, we were heading uh, to Hot Springs, Arkansas for bike week. And uh, actually, Tony surprised me with it. And he was like, look what I got. And I was uh, you know, we were going for bike week. And everybody was doing a lot of drinking, you know, downtown and all that kind of stuff. And he was, and, uh, and I was had already had my weight loss surgery and lost a whole bunch of weight. And um, I don't know how... That I think it was called Delta 10. I think that's what that pen, that vape pen was. But uh, it was strong. And and I don't know if it was because it had been so many years since I had, you know, had any or whatever. But I, I think I had said, I want a Snickers bar and a nap. You know, and I mean, it was, it was strong. Uh, I was definitely flying. So there are, and, and, I have a lot of trouble sleeping. I have uh, one of these, my, I, I'm an Android user, I don't do Apple, and this is a Galaxy watch um, from Samsung, and it. I wear it at night, and it tells me uh, how I slept, and I don't get much deep sleep. I'll be lucky to get an hour of deep sleep, but I wake up anywhere from 15 to 30 times a night and it's not to get up to go to the bathroom I just wake up I don't know if it's you know part of my heart failure kidney failure medication regime that I'm on that affects I don't know what it is but um, I don't take any kind of sleeping medicine I don't want to um, 
I, I don't think you should be dependent on that kind of stuff. And Ambien, uh, you know, causes memory problems. They think it contributes to to dementia, and which lead can lead to Alzheimer's. Like I just I just don't want to take anything like that. But a natural medication, I would be willing to try. Um, but you can go in these vape shops, and there's gummies now that you uh, can take, and you can. And there's different milligrams, and you can take half one if you want to. Uh, but I'm uh, af afraid to even start all that because I, I don't want to become dependent. And, and even though they say it's not addicting, I do not feel like it's a gateway drug because I would never do any kind of a drug that requires a recipe that's made like in a lab or whatever, something that's not natural, I would never do that. Ever, ever, ever in my whole life, never. Um, but so I, I'm not afraid that it would lead to something else, but I am afraid that it would make me want to start um, partaking again too much. And I, I cannot afford for it to make me want to use it and to eat and to gain weight because that is my priority. I'll, I'll never be fat again. Um, and I, it's not that I have anything against people that are overweight, that doesn't want to lose weight, that has no interest in losing weight. If you feel good and you're active and you can work and get your you know, stuff done and you're not isolated home or housebound or bed bound or, or whatever and your weight doesn't affect your life, then you do you, boo. It I don't I don't care what anybody else does. And you know, that that's your own personal decision. But my weight had affected me to the point that I was so very, very sick it was difficult for me to leave the house. I was housebound, almost bedbound. I had let myself get so big and I was so sick. So I had to do something about it. So between the prednisone and me being so sick and with the insulin and all that kind of stuff, and as much as I was partaking of the herbage plant uh, and overeating and stuff, it was just a recipe for disaster. So I decided to give that up, and um, that was just a personal decision that I had to make. Um, but that is why my channel is called Prissy Hippie, because I am a hippie. I, I was born in 1966. I, I guess I'm a late bloomin', bloomin hippie, but uh, I love hippie-type clothes. Um, the way Stevie Nicks dresses, you know, the bohemian look and you know, I just love all that. Uh, but, uh, and I, like I said, I've always been kind of prissy. I like um, makeup and hair stuff. And I don't know, I'm very girly. Uh, so like I said, my daddy's called me prissy since I was a little bitty girl. And so it just kind of stuck. And, um, but that's how I came up with the name Prissy Hippie. Uh, but, you know, and I'm sorry if you are going to hold that against me because at one time I was, um, I, I guess, and I hope I don't get in trouble, but I, I was the biggest pothead you've ever seen in your life. I absolutely loved it. Uh, and I still do. I don't hold it against anybody that wants to do that. It's a natural medicine that, uh, you know, it, as long as you go to work and make your paper boo-boo your money if it doesn't affect your life and you don't you know let it affect you um living your life like i said if you if it doesn't make you depressed or cause you any kind of psychosis because it does some people especially if you've got um mental health issues it can exacerbate it really can uh it, i think it depends on how it affects you uh, I, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, it didn't, it didn't do me that way. The only thing that it did, it made me very loving and very happy. I loved everybody and I loved to listen to music wide open and get in the kitchen and cook and, and bake. And, uh, I, I absolutely enjoyed it, but it, it did contribute to a lot of weight gain for me and I had to give it up. Um, there's alcoholism in my family. There's addiction in my family. I have never been a big drinker. That is not something that I struggle with. If we go on a cruise or something and uh, 
I want to have what they call a Miami Vice. It's where they mix the pina coladas and the strawberry daiquiris together. If it doesn't taste like alcohol, it's basically sugar. You know, I love the coconut, strawberry, pineapple, you know, that kind of stuff. If it tastes like ice cream or if it tastes like a dessert, I like it, but uh, um, I do like a margarita every now and then when we go to the Mexican restaurant. Um, but I'm I'm not a huge drinker. It's not some I would I I w could, wouldn't even dream of fixing myself a cocktail and drinking by myself at home. That's just it's just not part of my personality. I don't do that. Um, I I do not like beer. Can't stand this, the the smell of beer but I know a lot of people do that's fine or whatever but um, alcoholism uh, affected me a lot when I was a child it was in my home it was at not my mother but uh, my mother didn't drink at all I've never ever seen her take a sip of anything not wine not nothing uh, but I, I don't I don't care for alcohol that much uh, it's caused a lot of problems in my life and I just don't like it, but I don't hold it against anybody else. If if you want to drink, that's all right. I don't care. Uh, I've been the designated driver many, many times for my friends. You know, I, that's okay. It's just not something that I want to do. I wouldn't drink to excess and get drunk or whatever because um, I would not want to be so out of control that I couldn't take care of myself or that I'd be in a vulnerable situation or that I wouldn't, you know, be able to drive or be there for somebody if I needed to go help somebody. Do you know what I'm saying? It's just not something that I want to be involved with. But um, but I don't mind people's social drinking, you know. Uh, what Whatever you want to do, it's none of my business, but that's not something that I do. And alcohol does have a lot of calories, and I, I don't drink my calories. I drink, uh, I've always got a bottle of water nearby, and I drink my uh, Splenda tea, but, um, there, there's just some things that you have to, when you make up your mind that you want to get healthy and you're changing your lifestyle, uh, you have to find out what led you to become sick or to become overweight or whatever. And you have to address those issues. And I knew that me partaking in that plant daily uh, was causing me to um, continue to be so very overweight. So I gave it up. Uh, it's just as simple as that. Uh, if it uh, in the state of Georgia, they have an oil that's available uh, for people, and I do have a card. Uh, my doctor gave me a card because he wanted me to use it uh, to uh, help me sleep, and I did order it. It came out of California, um, and I couldn't tell it did a thing. So it must be. And that was before we had vape shops and there was gummies that I knew about. Maybe they had them and I just didn't know nothing about it. But um, that oil was expensive. I think it was $75 for a little bitty bottle about that big. It came in a dropper. And you put it under your tongue. It tasted terrible. But I, it didn't help me sleep. I couldn't tell it did a thing. I think it's only 5% or 10% or something THC, but it didn't do a thing. Um... But I'm sure if I would go get the gummies at the vape shop or a vape pen or something uh, and took one at night or whatever uh, before I went to bed, I'd probably sleep better. But I am scared to death that it would make me want more of it and make me want to do it during the day. or And it would, you know, uh, they call it the munchies where it makes you want to eat. And I just, I just don't want to do that. I don't want to introduce that again. I don't want no part of it. Um, because I have, I think at this point, I've lost about 220 pounds. I'm fixing to have skin removal surgery. Uh, it has completely changed my life, losing all that weight. And I just don't want to go back in the other direction. So until they progress here and we have dispensaries and I can go in and specifically choose one that does not cause you to want to eat, you know, get the munchies. Because I've never had any that didn't give you the munchies. Um, and I do miss it because it was a it was a lot of fun. It, I, I'm not I'm not going to lie. It was, I mean, there was a reason why you do it. Uh, there's, and, and maybe it's just like drinking. It's a form of escapism, you know, uh, it relaxes you, it makes you feel good, makes you in a good mood. Um, 
you know, and increases all those receptors and, and you just feel elated and you feel wonderful, you know, uh, and it's a terrific feeling, but I, you know, I'm, I'm high on life these days, you know, I've made some significant changes and I just, um, I, I just don't want to go backwards. So I've quit doing it. But like I said, if, if we ever do get a dispensary and I can go in and do my own shopping around and do my research and it wouldn't cause, now I won't smoke it because I, I don't want fine lines around my lips. I'm 58 years old. I'm close to 60 and I, I don't want to look any older than I am. Um, and I don't, I want it to affect my teeth. I don't, and you know, I, I, sucking something in and smoke going down in your lungs is not good for your lungs. So I, I would never smoke anything. Don't smoke cigarettes. You know, I just, I would not do that. So, um, but until, until it becomes legalized and I could pick the kind that doesn't cause you to have an increased appetite. But, um, by saying that, if you have an elderly person, family member, or somebody in your family gets sick, especially if it's a terminal uh, illness, I cannot recommend any more than you uh, getting them uh, some, some kind of cannabinoid product to help them. Uh, it would help their mood, it would help their appetite, it would relieve a lot of pain. I mean, there's a lot, there's a reason why God gave us that plant. Uh, I'm telling you, there, it does have some beneficial purposes, but it's, it's not um, legal in my state. I cannot go to a dispensary, and that I'm aware of just in these vape shops. Uh, I, I've never been in one. Tony Tony goes, he does tobacco products. He chews some kind of pouch of chewing tobacco. And some. I, I think he's just about quit doing the Copenhagen dipping snuff. I, he just chews tobacco now. And, and he's tried to quit smoking. I think he's down to a cigarette in the morning, a cigarette of evening. Um, but he's trying to quit smoking. But he does chew tobacco. And he gets it from a certain tobacco shop here in our little town um and he said there's all kinds of stuff in there and he said go in and talk to him and i'm like nah i just i just don't want to i i'm afraid it's going to lead me down to a path and i'm going to start gaining weight again and i won't do anything that's going to make me gain weight uh I, this morning i was 181 and my goal is to be 175 by uh, my surgery date of November 14th. That's what my goal is. And the surgeon said that she could remove anywhere from 10 to 20 pounds. We'll just have to see. So I'm away the day of and I'm anxious to see after the surgery and the swelling goes down and all that kind of stuff how, how much she actually you know, took off and how it affects me. But I mean, I, from 396.4 pounds to 181 pounds is a heck of a lot of weight. And I just, I don't want to go backwards. But um, I don't know, excuse me, my nose is kind of itching, my allergies are bothering me. I don't, I don't know if that's something, you know, if, if, if y'all hold it against me because I do like it or something, we're just different people. You know, maybe you like alcohol. I don't care for it. You might think I'm terrible because I partook in something that was not legal or whatever, but y'all need to do some research uh, and, and find out the reason why they demonized. And, and, I, and I'll tell you a shortened version of it, but, but read about it. Uh, way back when, I don't know if it was the 1930s, 1940s, or something like that, hemp became a big thing, and they were it, it was affecting the pocketbooks of a lot of people, and they lined the pocketbooks of a lot of politicians, uh, of people that were making like uh, things out of wood, paper products, or whatever, and they wanted to make hemp illegal and not available because they... Uh, it, it, they weren't making money and so they demonized it and spread a whole bunch of lies about hemp and cannabis and different things and and they made it illegal and I think they're and that is exactly what started the whole thing 
And so that's why it was made illegal to begin with, just like they, they you know, made alcohol illegal and they had bootleggers making moonshine and stuff in the middle of the woods or up in the mountains or whatever. It's all about money. It comes down to money and who's making money and who's not making money. Uh, but that's why it got demonized to begin with and uh, made illegal to begin with. And I think everybody's kind of coming around and realizing that there are a lot of benefits that come, can come from it. And um, hopefully uh, before I am six feet under one day, we'll see that it is legal and available for everybody, just like in Canada. You know, um, uh, it shouldn't be illegal and we should have access to the different kinds so you can pick and choose you know for whatever symptoms you have or whatever ailment you're wanting to treat or you know the specifics that you that you need it for you know um, but like I said if I could ever get my hands on the kind that that don't make you eat yes ma'am I would definitely partake because it if you've never done it uh, you don't know what you're missing uh, yeah, but you know that's that's just my personal opinion, but that that's the origin of my channel name, uh, Prissy Hippie, because uh, deep down I am a tree-hugging, plant-loving hippie. I sure enough am, and I've always been Prissy, so that's the perfect name for my channel as Prissy Hippie. But anyway, I, I think I've answered all the questions that I have gotten here and there. I answered what my green girl's name are and how to pronounce them in their their ages. Uh, I told you the origin of my channel name. Um, and let's see, what what else was the question that I answered? Oh, what my highest weight was and how much I've lost. And I don't know if there was anything else. If I, if I if ask me anything you want to, I'm an open book. I'll never hide anything from you. I'll never lie to you. I'm, that's just something I don't believe in. I won't lie to you. Uh, so if you want to know something, I'm an open book, I'll tell you. Um, but I appreciate so much. I cannot believe how much my channel has grown just here here lately. Uh, I think before Miss Karma, uh, she, uh, Karma 101, she's a really sweet lady. I love her channel. She's a hardworking woman. I love to watch her videos. She's so good at it. But she gave me a shout out, kind of highlighted me, and I got a lot of channel subscribers by her mentioning me. I think I only had like 200, 200 and something at the time and I'm almost up to 700 now. So thank you so much. Y'all just don't know how much I appreciate uh, you watching my videos and commenting and being a subscriber. It means so much to me. I enjoy making these videos. I only work part time and I don't have my grand girls, but every other week. Uh, so uh, it's a it's just a wonderful hobby. I I love making videos and filming and you know sharing my interests and things that I like to do. I couldn't imagine like ten or fifteen years ago. Um, I think I joined YouTube in like two thousand eight or two thousand nine, but I never had dreamed of making videos. And, uh, but I've, you know, I've got a lot of interest and I love makeup and I love to cook and bake and stuff. And, and I just thought, well, that might be something I could do. Now, I'm terrible at editing. Uh, I use CapCut and I know how to splice little excerpts together. Um, but I, that's about all I know how to do. And I've watched videos, but it, I think it just takes practice. There's something else I'd like to do, um, I'd like to start a second channel or maybe make a series on this channel. I'd love to do reaction videos because I love to watch uh, reaction channels. Uh, you know, talk people giving their opinion and talking about, you know, other, you know, basically it's girl world about different um, other creators on this platform. And I think that you, they d use something called OBS to be able to do that. But I... 
I've not explored that yet. So my granddaughter says she knows, my 14 year old, she says she knows how to use OBS and she knows how to do that. So she's gonna teach me. So I might be starting another series and, and doing some reaction channels because I'm very, very interested in that. If I could ever figure out how to uh, do the reactions or whatever. So if anybody knows how to do that, please, please teach me, please give me any advice because uh, I'd, I'd, I'd love to do that. I'd, I'd like to make a video, uh, you know, a day or at least two or three times a week reacting to other creators and giving my opinion and stuff. But anyway, that's just an idea that I'm kind of throwing uh, around. But I will, somebody had asked me to um, make some, the chess squares and so I'm gonna get me some cream cheese, but I need to wait till the grand girls come back because they love them. That is Brentley, the oldest one's absolute favorite dessert and they'll be back Sunday night. So maybe that'll be a video that I make on Monday. Um, uh, we're going to have a birthday party for Kirksey, and uh, she wants me to make her a homemade tiramisu, so I'll film that. But one of the girls, which is Brentley, cannot stand coffee, and she doesn't like tiramisu, so that would be perfect for me to make her chest squares or ooey-gooey butter cake. I'll let her choose what flavor of base that she wants, and I'll, I'll make both of those and film it, so be watching for that. I think... Uh, Ashley said we were going to do her uh, Kirksey's birthday party either the 19th or 20th. So about that time, I'll, I'll film bo both of those things. But um, at the end of this video, I'm fixing to get in the shower because I think this is about dried. I've left it on for so long, but I'm going to get in the shower and wash this out and everything. And um, But I, I want to show you that uh, that little easy peasy fudge that I've got sitting up in the refrigerator. I'm gonna, I think I've got half a bag of chocolate chips and I'm gonna melt those and drizzle that on the top of it so it'll be chocolate peanut butter for Tony um, because he, he absolutely loves. You know, you know that chocolate fudge kind of that like they used to make in school or whatever, that, that was Tony's favorite dessert. It basically tastes like a Reese's peanut butter cup but uh, I'll show you that at the end of the video. So I'm not closing it out yet. But anyway, I just wanted to answer some questions. And um, and I know y'all can't believe I got on here looking like this. But y'all, I'm just a average, normal, that you know, grandma. You know, and I, I this is what I look like because this is what I'm doing. I'm piddling. I've swept and mopped the kitchen and done a little bit of cleaning. And I've had this sitting on my my hair while I was piddling it a little bit and I uh, didn't have to work today and I'm just kind of doing around and I thought I'd turn the camera on and answer some questions but anyway thank you so much and I'll see you in a little while with the update on that fudge I'll see you in a minute okay see ya Okay, I just took it out of the refrigerator. It's been in there for hours and hours, and I didn't have not even a half a bag of chocolate chips, and I just took a bowl and melted it in the refrigerator. So let me cut a little piece of it and see what Tony thinks about it. It's pretty thin, because you know, I put it in that bigger pie plate, but that's uh, what it looks like. I kind of dug it out or whatever. Um, so I'll get Tony to take a piece of it. I don't think he wants to be on camera. So uh, I'll just point it at that. So um, take a bite and tell me what you think. Tell me what you think it tastes like. Doesn't have much chocolate on it because I didn't have many chocolate chips. I just heated it for like a minute in the microwave and stirred it after 30 seconds. Put it back in there for 30 seconds. It's good. What's it taste like? Like at school. Uh, does it taste like a Reese's peanut butter cup? Mm-hmm. It does? Mm -hmm. Good. You want to try it, Ashley? A little bite of it? Okay, hang on. Okay, Ashley's going to try it. What you think? Does it taste like fudge? Mm -hmm. Good. Does it taste like fudge or uh, a Reese's peanut butter cup? I'm in between. In between? Okay, cool. I wanted to show you my hair. It took all of the brassiness out, I think. Um... I've got a section, Ashley calls it my peepaw streak, she's got one too, but I, I, that is really, really white, and let's see, let me see if I can get under the light so you can really see it. Do you, do you see this part right here? 
I mean, it, it makes it really, really white when you put that purple conditioner on it. Um, but yeah, it takes the, the brassiness out. I just blow dried it straight because, you know, my hair is naturally um, cur curly, wavy. I don't know. You know, they do it um, like a 2A, 2B, 3A. I don't know what I am, but um, it's, it's really wavy and it's got some curls. In the last food line um, haul, Yesterday, I, I wore it curly, and I had some mousse in it or gel or something, and so that uh, I didn't really do anything to it. I just let it dry, um, and it's curly, but when I um, blow dry it, uh, it I can blow dry it straight, but it gets kind of, I've got it smoothed down because it gets kind of big, fluffy, you know. But anyway, can, can you tell that it's, um white oh you can really tell it there do you see that it's just as white as it can be look at that but it, it's instead of being yellow or orange or brassy it takes all of that out from the hard water stains and i mean for a dollar 25 from the dollar tree you just can't beat that you know but anyway i just thought i'd show you how it turned out that's the end of the video thank you so much for watching and listen to me gab and blab about everything if you have any questions you want me to answer i'll answer it in a few a future video thank you so much for for watching like share subscribe if you're not subscribed uh, leave me a comment below and i'll see you in the next one thanks so much bye bye